A New York Times bombshell about Brett Kavanaugh bus. President Trump reacting just minutes ago, the paper now being accused of smearing the Supreme Court justice. It comes after a weekend story about a new sexual assault allegation from Kavanaugh's college days. The Times forced to make a major revision after leaving out key facts, including that the accuser declined to be interviewed and that friends say she doesn't even recall the alleged incident. 2020 Democrats immediately jumping on the unverified claim to demand Kavanaugh be impeached. President Trump responding by defending Kavanaugh and attacking the Times. Watch. I think the New York Times made another terrible mistake. It's, uh, it's a shame that a thing like that could happen. I see they're making a big correction today. They've just announced there's a correction. But to do that about a Supreme Court justice is a terrible thing. It's a false accusation. Whatever happened with the New York Times, I mean, I can tell you personally, they never check. They never do. We used to have a thing called fact-checking. They don't do fact-checking anymore. They used to call and say, what about this? What about that? How can they do a thing like that and destroy somebody's life? I mean, they're destroying lives. And it's fake news. It's just fake news. But it's a very fair question. I mean, they have to be very embarrassed. But much more importantly, what they do is wrong, and they do it all the time. All right, Greg, it's like the New York Times keeps stepping on a rake. I don't know. I don't see the problem here. They just left out one minor detail, right? It's like, it's like imagine a front page that says, you know, major stock market crash. And then four pages later, it says, well, actually, the stock market went up 10 points. Uh, everything we just said was a complete and utter lie. Uh, most editors and writers are liberal. We know that. But most good editors will operate with a conservative filter so, that, so they don't get compromised by their own biases. So they know that they're right. liberal. and they don't right. want to, But if they, if they don't check themselves, then they might allow a corrupt product to go through. That no longer exists for The New York Times. So the filter is gone. So anything goes through. Uh, we, I, I think we should be pretty grateful that there are people like uh, Molly Hemingway, that are out there because like I didn't like I didn't spend the time this weekend reading a book. I didn't spend the time chasing down this crap. Dana did. I, Dana, yeah, but but uh, but Dana so read six. but if, if one person or, or two people weren't paying attention, if Molly Hemingway hadn't pointed this out that the that the main person, the victim, could not verify the actual accusation. The Times would not have copped to this. They would not have had the corre correction. They're only doing it because they got caught, and it raises that a really big question. How many stories did they get away with because nobody was paying attention? I would say almost all of the stories the New York Times has done are inaccurate and wrong. That's, that's how I see it now. They're all wrong. No, because I've been, you know this, Dana, and I, Juan, you know this too. Jesse, you will. Do I? <laughs> you may be. That when you become the object of a story, oh, yeah. that's when you know stuff is left out. Well, that's true. It's true. It's, I that, but I didn't think it was fair to say everything they write. Well, you know, but, but it happened to me. The New York Times had written stuff about me years ago, and I just kind of laughed it off because it's like, oh, well, you can't get it all right. Now you know they get it all wrong. They actually did a story on me, and they put the wrong person's picture. They did that to me. Went over me. It was New York Magazine. But did it work in your favor? Um, everyone knows what I look like, unfortunately. Um, but I, I do agree with you, Greg. And, and here's where I disagree with you a little bit. I think they made the mistake on purpose. Really? I think they purposely left this out, and then the day later say, oh, you know, we'll add that in later because that's their agenda. They have talented people there, and it's a great company. But they have an agenda, and the agenda right now is to sell newspapers and attack the President of the United States. I have a new way I digest these mainstream media attacks now, Juan. Would you like to hear? Absolutely. <laughs> I wait 24 hours, and then the bombshell yes. turns out to be a bust. Yep. Because even if just the last month we've had this story, we've had the CNN Russia story, we've had the Lawrence O'Donnell Russia story, and then we've had the Trump Turnberry Resort story. All of those turned out to be not what they were presented as. It's like a reverse shrinky dink. Well, I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah. You don't? <laughs> what you don't? is a shrinky dink? The, the New York Times story is a reverse in. shrinky dink. You call shrinky it dinks, you know, they expand. In this case, they expand and then they shrink. Was that a, a toy in the 70s? Yes. In the 80s. Okay. All right. Well, either way. And even I can see Morning it now. Joe. I get a whole bunch of shrinky dinks. Even Morning <laughs> Joe criticized the New York Times here. And just look at the Kavanaugh accusations in the beginning. There were no corroborating witnesses, and the one woman who says she was there. She says she wasn't there, and she doesn't even believe Blasey Ford. This is investigated by the Senate, investigated by the FBI. And then this new story about Yale. Think about how ridiculous this sounds. He had something out mm -hmm, at a party, <laughs> and someone pushed the uh-huh into someone else. 
I mean, and there's and no that witnesses. Someone else doesn't remember it. Yeah, there's no witnesses, and the one person who heard about it worked as a Clinton defense lawyer. I mean, come on, it's preposterous, and it just shows how bankrupt the left now is because all they do is they smear against racism, they smear against Russia, and they smear against rape. <laughs> and it's Juan, sad. corrections should be rare, right? But we have a, have a rash of them. I don't think we have any rash. I think, in fact, I don't think this is about the New York Times. To my mind, this is about the FBI and the Senate. I mean, obviously, during the hearings now a year ago, Dana, we were promised when Kavanaugh was confirmed that the FBI looked in, especially to the Christine Blasey Ford allegations, and that there was nothing that you could not refute what, the, what Justice Kavanaugh had said, and it would be unfair to him, as unfair to anybody, to just allow some, you know, scurrilous allegation to stand. And the FBI couldn't find any evidence to back up what Ford was saying. That's what, although she gave good testimony. But now we know that they did not, because we have Senator Kuhn saying he sent them a letter about this latest allegation. And the allegation, by the way, still stands by this man who attended Yale with Kavanaugh. This is the guy what, that w w worked for Jesse the Clintons. Referenced, no, right. this is a guy who yeah, his Steyer. Max Steyer yeah, is with a Clintons. partnership for public service, but he's that's a nonpartisan group, but he's but he, the one. But, who made this allegation back then. Coons, Senator Kuhn says he sent this allegation to the FBI. But we've never heard any, the FBI apparently did not investigate it. And then the thing but is that- how do you investigate something when the, somebody that said, that this guy says it happened to this woman and Emily- Yeah, the sources of the allegations were, were seen as very flimsy. By, Byron York runs it down, of the seven sources, all of them heard it from each other, secondhand. Yeah. Well, right. the point is that if you, how, if you had an investigation, if you had an investigation, we would know, but there was no investigation. So it comes oh. out in this book. By the way, there's an L.A. Times reporter has a similar thing going. And the people say, yeah, well, Max Steyer it has yeah, it. Yeah, they heard it from each other. And Max Steyer <laughs> is saying, yeah, I stand by it, but we don't. The, the key part, and this is where the New York Times did make an error, was that they omitted key information that this woman has declined to be interviewed and says to her friends that she doesn't remember the Okay, incident. so then if that's the case, Emily, how does the FBI investigate something that the woman says she doesn't recall even happened? Or at what point do you say, okay, the investigation is complete because there is no corroborating evidence other than me citing that person A told person B the same thing that I'm hearing from person A? That mm -hmm. does not a corroboration make. My issue with this, it's, to me, there's the, there's the news aspect, the New York Times, there's the publication, and there's the delivery. Right, because remember how many tweets have they had to delete lately? Right. Mm -hmm. So they published and omitted not just key information, but literally fundamental information that poked holes in it. This is like when was it in the 40s or 50s when they were broadcasting War of the Worlds on the radio and they yeah. didn't say this is fiction, this is fiction. So people were freaking out, thinking that aliens were attacking. It goes to your point earlier. So they omit the fundamental information that this is not corroborated, this is an allegation from the prior. Then they do it in a delivery which says, oh, it's harmless fun, and have to retract that, just like their 9-11 tweet. And then we have on the side a bunch of 2020 Democratic candidates who say they are all for criminal justice reform and yet are playing judge, jury, and executioners. And Kamala Harris is saying, you lied and your testimony should be retracted and you all should be impeached. The Democratic Party, to me, if this is continued to, if they continue to pursue this, they are shooting themselves in the foot, and it is themselves that they are destroying. Well, I don't think it's reckless uh, uh, fun, as you say, the New York Times. Said. I think that they they have a guy, Max Dyer, who's on the record saying this happened. And guess what? No, no. He's, Deborah, he's on the record no, saying he heard it. Deborah, Deborah Ramirez made a similar allegation that was again dismissed during the course of the hearings. Now we're thinking, hey, this what? sounds a lot like what we heard before in the other case, oh, doesn't it? No, no, no. I, let's just fit. New York Times got caught with their pants down. How ironic. Well, somebody <laughs> else might have, too. Not, that's the problem. It didn't happen. <laughs> All right.